So in this film, we're going to get going with pop art for kind of uh, beginners or getting started with Photoshop and things. Um, if you're uh, brand new to Photoshop or in your early days of Photoshop, you'll know that you'll be playing around with the filter galleries and you'll kind of really love some stuff. Well, um, I'm a fan of pop art um, based on the Andy Warhol kind of uh, iconic images from the 60s and 70s and beyond, as it were. Um, and what I'm looking to do is change this fine art image of kind of spices on spoons into something a little bit more dynamic, more art based. And um, because of my influence when I was in school and I fell in love with the work and the silk screen printing of Andy Warhol, that's kind of followed me through even through my photographic career. So um, without delay, let's kind of transform this image without any real work at all with it okay so the first thing to do is to preserve the original if possible so in other words we've got our background layer here let's make a duplicate layer of this um so we're going to just drag it down onto the plus uh, on the layers palette and that will create a duplicate on the top as you can see just to show you how simple uh, the technique is all we're going to do is just go straight into filter and go into filter gallery and we want to choose the cutout let me just kind of bring this out here and scroll out a bit so you can start to see the transformation of the photograph there we go so in the artistic section uh, of the filter gallery if you choose the second one in at the top it's cut out and really what you're going to be concentrating on is number of levels and edge simplicity those are the key things so um, pop art comes from, uh, yeah, silk screen, I should say, comes from masking and then applying different colored inks at different stages of the, the printing process to overlay ink on ink and ink and so on. Um, what we're doing here is with the number of levels, we're choosing how many um, uh, kind of colors or uh, designated areas we want yes colors is the key thing here and then we've also got the edge simplicity which is kind of um, if I move it up you can see now it kind of uh, simplifies the edge um, so it's kind of um, very cut out line cuts with a knife and things uh, whereas the uh, smaller the number you get more of the detail as such so when we're looking at the likes of silk screen probably working between about six and seven as a rule and um, anywhere from three to no more than five uh, I would say as far as your colors are concerned um, but again art for art's sake it's really down to you what you like um, and then as far as the edge fidelity is concerned, you're going to see it's going to have a little bit of an effect where it starts to kind of record more information. So the edge fidelity is just that little bit more of detail within the image. So if you want to keep it simpler, less fidelity, you want to have edge simplicity, which is going to be um, less as it were. So around about six, seven and the number of levels I would always keep to about three. So let's turn this back down to six, edge fidelity up to about two there. There we go. And then we're just going to press OK. And as you can see here already now, we've created a drastic different, uh, something that looks more pop arty than what we were seeing and things. OK, so um, in this way, if you just want to do some kind of uh, simple pop uh, kind of colors or changing colors, um, what I'd recommend you to do is actually just pick up the um, adjustment layer and go into hue and saturation. And at this point, if we just drag this properties panel out so you can see what I'm working on, just by here, we've got a little scrubby hand tool. If you click on that, wherever you then position the cursor, you can see a little eyedropper tool. So if we were to kind of select around this mustardy color here at the base, um, it now turns into the hand scrubby tool if I hold the mouse down. And when I start to actually move it now, you start to see the saturation begin to change within that element. So here's a quick way for us to really start to pop certain colors, certain tone, tones within the image itself. If there's a um, color that I want to really go in and affect, um, say this here, you can see all I've done is click onto the area uh, the area that I want to affect here and it chooses that uh, color and then from here I can go in and actually change 
the hue and saturation to do with that area of the photograph specifically. Now, be, because we're kind of adjusting over the whole Im image, you can see how it does change certain different colors as well. Um, but this is a really good way to get going with the likes of pop art and how you can uh, instantly change uh, the likes of your original image into something uh, a little bit more uh, funky as far as the look is concerned. If you want to, you can go in and mask some of the area, uh, the areas. So if we want to adjust the uh, the kind of the darker areas on the outside here and dramatically change that, we could go into the likes of uh, select and we could go into color range. We could select onto the area that we want to adjust. When we press OK, that creates a mask. If I then do a control J, which is duplicating the layer, so in other words, if I drag the layer down onto that plus again, um, it duplicates the whole layer. But if I, um, in the selection, just do control J, it now makes a new layer just of the actual selection that I made here. So if we pull that above the hue and saturation, and we want to adjust this color as say a solid, we could then go in and um, click onto solid color, choose a color that we want to actually work with. Let's go for a shocking pink. And then if we just wanted to associate it just to this layer below, this layer one, this outside, we need to use the um, op option, which is the kind of the uh, clip to the layer below. So in other words, if we press the Alt key on the keyboard and we just hover between the two layers and then you click it, you can see straight away, straight away what it's done is apply the color now just to that selection. So when we start to actually bring the other areas up, you start to have this effect that will drastically change the image. Now, from this alone, you can just start to change its blend modes to interact in slightly different ways as well. So it doesn't actually take over the whole image. In fact, it just has a, a slight effect to the photograph. And then, of course, because we've got the likes of an instant mask that is created on the side here, you could just go ahead and pick up your brush tool um, and start to paint on the, air, the areas uh, remember, black uh, hides and white reveals. So if you've got white on the top, you just need to press X to swap those around. And then you can go in and actually start to paint away the areas that you don't want the actual pink to uh, affect in this case. So what have we done? We literally took the original image. We duplicated the image. We went up into filter and filter gallery. We chose artistic and cut out. We changed the uh, likes of the um, number of levels, the edge simplicity and the actual uh, edge fidelity. We pressed OK. We completely changed our image. We then went up and created a hue and saturation adjustment layer. We then use the scrubby tool to select the different parts of the image that we want to affect. and we've created simple pop art. And remember, you can do this across different kind of types of image, depends on the kind of thing that you're working on. But it's a great way to actually start to blend the world, perhaps, of photography into a little bit more artistic level.